Then we have the liabilities and equity we're going to move on to, starting with the current liabilities. First one being accounts payable. We're going to go through a similar calculation that we did with the receivable in order to figure out what is in there. Now, this is going to be a bit more simplified because of the way this particular problem was set up. We're basically left with, in the receivable, this number here, the September. And, but let's go through the calculation a bit in the long way just so we can see how this calculation would work and how you could see it applied to a different type of setup. In this setup, we're saying that we're going to purchase everything on account and then pay for everything the following month. So if we think about this, we're going to say, okay, then that means that there's 200500 That's what we started off in accounts payable. That's what was in there at the end of last month. That's what's in there at the beginning of this month. And then we're going to say, okay, then we had purchases of raw materials. Remember, the assumption is that we purchased all of it on account. So we purchased everything on account. In this case, for the entire month, we purchased 611474 all of it on account. So that would increase the accounts payable. Then we have to think about how much payments for raw material. How much did we pay? And the assumption is that we pay uh, the month following. We pay for the full previous month the month following. <laughs> so that means that the amount we paid uh, in, in August, we paid the 200005 And then uh, in September, sorry, in July, we paid the 200005 that we that we purchased the month before. And then... Uh, and then in August, we paid the 207. And then in September, we paid this 212 for the purchases. That leaves us then, of course, with this number. So if we add up the 200,005 plus the 207, 224 plus the 212, 625, we've come up with the 191. Uh, I'm sorry, we come up with the 62349. And if we then say, let's take out the calculator and actually do the calculation here so then if we take the 200,500 we started with plus the 611474 minus uh, what we paid 620,349 we're going to end up with the 191,625 here and of course that is the purchases that we made in September so that's why this one happened to wind up of course the purchases that we are left in September because we're going to pay them all off in the following month. All right, so if we pull that over, there's the 191,625 here. Next, we have the short term loan payable, 8,160. Uh, that, remember, we're going to take from our cash flow statement because that loan is fluctuating. It's kind of like a line of credit. We needed that in order to get to our minimum balance of this 40,000 in cash. And then we have the income tax payable. That's going to come from the income statement. So that's going to be down here on the income statement. We had to calculate the income tax payable. That is what's going to be owed for income taxes on the balance sheet at the end of this time period. Then we have the uh, total current liabilities. That's going to be, of course, this number plus this number plus this number will give us the total current liabilities. Then we have the long term note payable. That doesn't change according in this particular problem. That was the 500,000 at the beginning of the time frame. We're paying off interest only during this time period, during this quarter. Therefore, the principal does not go down. So we're still at the 500,000.